I think I just inhaled a floret. Wait, I'm like not myself today. This is because I had too many palomas yesterday. Broccoli. It's not everyone's favorite vegetable, mostly because a lot of us grew up eating frozen, sad, watery broccoli on the cafeteria line in middle school. This broccoli we're gonna make today is truly gonna be the best broccoli of your life. We're gonna roast it with olive oil, salt, and pepper, and we're gonna prepare it three different ways. So get ready for the best broccoli of your life. So the first broccoli we're gonna make, this is the one that changed everything for me. I made this in 2008 and I posted it on my blog and called it the best broccoli of your life and it went viral. It was the top broccoli result when you Googled broccoli recipe for about 10 years. That's impressive. It's why I'm so rich. <laughs> Not really. The thing is with these broccoli stems, these are very long stems and most people throw them away. I'm gonna try to conserve as much of the stem as I can because it's delicious and it's wasteful to not use it. So let's start by cutting off the really tough part. And then you, you have two choices here. You can do like a long piece of broccoli like that, which conserves the stem, or you can just throw the stem in like that. I think it's prettier to have florets like this. Don't get rid of the leaves. So the game we're basically playing is how much of this broccoli can we preserve without wasting it. The other thing you wanna kinda of keep an eye out for is that you want your broccoli relatively to be dry. Cause if you have wet broccoli, it's not gonna roast in the oven, it's going to steam in the oven, which is not the best broccoli of your life. So we're gonna basically just cut this. You see how I'm cutting through the um, florets and you get these pieces. Basically when you're cutting something like this, you just wanna ask yourself, what would I like to stab my fork into when it's roasted? And that looks like a nice hearty piece. If you want smaller pieces, you can do smaller pieces. The other thing is when you have a flat surface like that and you're gonna roast it, you want it to sit on that surface and all of that will get caramelized. So it'll all get golden brown, which is what you want. So, okay, so now Ina Garten, when she does this recipe, and this is Ina's recipe, has you measure everything. She believes in measuring, I don't. What I'm gonna do is just drizzle this with olive oil. You just wanna get it all lubricated. The more olive oil that you use, the more coated the vegetable will be or whatever you're roasting. You can do this with Brussels sprouts, cauliflower. The more lubricated it is, the more it will conduct the heat and the more caramelized it will get. So don't be shy with your oil. I'm gonna add some salt. Again, don't be shy with that. That's really important. This is my new pepper grinder. In previous videos, I've told you I had two pepper grinders, one that my husband got me, one that I bought in Paris. This one was recommended by Allison Roman, and I love it because it grinds a ton of pepper. I think it's called the Magnum, which sounds slightly perverted, but it really is called that. This is a non-stick cookie sheet from Great Jones. And again, this isn't a sponsored post, but I really like this because it cleans up really well. Garlic is very important here because it just adds more flavor. So we have the garlic. You just wanna make sure it's all evenly distributed. Ideally, you want the garlic to be on top of the broccoli so it doesn't burn on the sheet, but it's fine. Okay, so now we are going to pop this into a 425 oven and it will take about 20 minutes. The most important thing when this is in the oven is not to really move it around too much because you want it to develop a crust. About halfway through, we'll check it and we'll lift up a piece and see if it's golden brown. If it is, we'll flip everything over and finish. So let's put this in the oven. So now we are going to toast our nuts. Um, these are slivered almonds. Again, Ina uses pine nuts for this. Ina is very rich. Pine nuts now are like insanely expensive. Even she might have to remortgage her barn to buy some. He's so adorable. I'd believe anything he told me. You have two choices. You could do it on the stove top in a little skillet, but then you really have to keep tossing them because they'll burn really fast. I've learned to do it on a cookie sheet or a half sheet as this is known. Um, it just is a little safer and the heat gets around it more quickly, but it's very easy to forget that it's in there. So I'm gonna put it in there. I'm gonna keep checking it because it goes from toasted to burnt really fast. So I'm gonna put it on the lower shelf. That's perfect, I think. No, it's not perfect. Actually, I think it is perfect. Okay, because it will continue to cook a little. Always seizing your nuts, that's what I say. It's one of my favorite mottos. So look, you can see the garlic is browning. And look at the color on there, see? It's getting good color. Look at that, oh my God. Oh wow, look at that one. The reason it looks so good is because I didn't move it. The, the less you move it around, the more it will caramelize. So back in it goes. Now the garlic is definitely on the edge of burnt. So we wanna keep an eye on that. 
So, taking this out, and we're gonna stab through. So, I'm gonna take this out. I think, you know, that might be, the stems might be a little too some. The florets are definitely done. So, let us doctor our broccoli while it's hot. All right, so we're gonna add lemon zest. We're gonna add lemon juice. And then we're gonna juice it directly over. So now this is fresh Parmesan and you wanna add it while the broccoli is still hot so that it melts directly onto it. And finally, we're gonna add some of the toasted nuts. Oh my God, look at the crispy garlic. That looks so good. Now as a final flourish, we're going to drizzle it with some really good olive oil, some finishing Parmesan and when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the colors. I think a little red Aleppo pepper on here would be delicious. And then the final piece de resistance is going to be just a lemon wedge on the plate without the seed. All right, we're gonna sprinkle this with some of the toasted nuts just for texture. So this is the original, the OG, the first breast broccoli of your life that I ever made. And I'm gonna taste it to make sure it's good. Mmm, wow. It's just delicious, it's like, Caramelized, it does have that like French fry feeling because of the caramelization. And then all the other components just lend it more flavor. So if you're gonna try one of these recipes, start with this one, it's the greatest. Thank you, Ina. All right, so we are going to chop the broccoli for preparation number two. And this is very similar to preparation number one. We're doing literally exactly the same thing, only we are not using garlic. And this one is inspired um, by David Chang's Brussels sprout recipe. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with these broccoli florets that we did. Now, with this recipe, because it has more Asian flavors, you could use canola oil or more neutral oil because olive oil does have its own flavor, but we're just gonna do it. So again, lubricate with olive oil. You, you just eyeball it based on what looks right to you. Um, we're gonna use some salt. We're gonna toss that together. And we're gonna put it on this cookie sheet. And when that's in the oven, we're gonna make the sauce that's gonna go with that. And we're gonna to toss that all together when that comes out of the oven. And this will go in again for another 20 minutes. Okay, so we are now going to make the David Chang Brussels sprouts momofuku sauce that we're gonna to toss our broccoli with. So this is basically we're taking a Brussels sprout recipe and turning it into a broccoli recipe. It's very similar. It starts with fish sauce, which is a game changer in your kitchen. So there you go. So there's a quarter cup of fish sauce. So then we get two tablespoons of sugar. And we're gonna juice our lime directly in there. It calls for rice wine vinegar. I forgot to buy that. I have white balsamic vinegar, which actually in terms of a flavor profile, it's not dissimilar because they're both kind of fruity and sweeter. So we're gonna add a splash of that. I'm gonna whisk the sugar into the mixture of um, fish sauce and vinegar. All right, so I'm gonna add some garlic and grate this garlic in. I think that's a good amount. Look at all that. And that goes right in. So chilies, these are red Fresno chilies. These are very spicy. So I'm actually gonna slice it into rings to start. And then, you know, normally you're supposed to cut out the membrane and the seeds, but I think for our purposes, it's fine to leave. And now I'm gonna chop them because I don't wanna get a big bite of chili in my broccoli. That goes in there, and the more that sits in that mixture, the more infused it will get with the heat. The final ingredient is one of the most surprising things, maybe, that I've learned in cooking, which is that cilantro stems have as much flavor, if not more flavor, than the leaves, and they're great in something like this, in the, in the dressing, because they add a freshness. As you can see, I'm just adding those stems, and there's some leaves in there, but that's totally fine, just don't get huge stems in there. And then we're gonna whisk that all together. And that just looks good, doesn't it? All right, so we're gonna do the famous knife test. But I can already tell this is basically done because we've got the color. And we're getting some good steaming, not steaming, but smoking. Yeah, the knife went through. All right, so we're dumping all the broccoli directly into the fish sauce. Oh my God, that is gonna be good. Look at that. But we also wanna Give it some more flair. We are going to put the lime around the plate just for de not decoration, but also so people can squeeze more lime onto it if they'd like. Um, we have our cilantro, and with cilantro, 
you don't really um, need to chop it finely. You basically want to keep most of the leaves whole. So we're just going to kind of wake it up a little by doing that. And then we're going to sprinkle that all over. And also, I'm sorry, I'm going to add some of the red chilies just to the side. I think it's a nice garnish. And then sesame seeds. And sesame seeds, you know, it's kind of not, you don't need it, but I just like the way they look. And there you go, that's roasted broccoli number two. You want a fork? I got it. All right, so I'm gonna taste this now. It already looks beautiful, but we got, there's only one way to tell. And oh my God, this one looks perfect. So it's coated in the sauce. Mmm. Wow. Sweet, savory, salty, spicy. Fantastic. All right, so now we're going to try one I've never done before. This is um, a recipe from the New York Times by Yasmin <coughs> Farr, and it's sort of a Greek <coughs> recipe that called for broccolini, but I figured since we're doing broccoli with all our videos, we're going to use regular broccoli. It also has onion, lemon slices, feta, and cherry tomatoes. So let's get started. And you know, this one's going to be a little different because the cherry tomatoes are going to give off their liquid. So we want to avoid, again, the broccoli steaming. So we're going to Try to space everything apart so that the cherry tomatoes, instead of um, becoming juicy and like wet, we want them to caramelize too. I think that's the goal here. Okay, so there's the broccoli. That looks good. Next in there is gonna be a bowl of heirloom cherry tomatoes. I like heirloom cherry tomatoes because they're all different colors and sizes, but you can do this with regular cherry meat tomatoes too. So that's going in there. We're gonna do red onion wedges. And the final piece of the puzzle, which is fascinating to me, is a whole sliced lemon that is gonna go in with everything else. The whole lemon, can you believe it? I'm just taking the seeds out, obviously, because you don't want to have seeds in your, you know, broccoli, Greek broccoli bake. All right, so we're gonna do some olive oil, once again, but we're gonna do even more this time because we have more in there. We're gonna do salt. And we're gonna do some of these cumin seeds, which will just add a little depth of flavor. That's a little too much. Okay, so we're gonna to toss it all together once again. We want everything coated in the olive oil and the salt and the cumin. And again, we wanna spread it out so it doesn't steam. I'm putting this in a 400 degree, 425 degree oven, even though the recipe calls for 400. I'm a 425 girl and I always have them. I enjoy that, that's just who I am. All right, so we're gonna pop that in the oven and when it's about halfway through, we'll toss things and I'll put the feta on top. That's my own spin on it um, and we'll see how it goes. And we're gonna put it in the lower shelf just to get more heat on it. It's looking good, but... Oh yeah, they got color, wow. All right, we do wanna flip it. You want the onion to get caramelized a little, so this is all gonna be a ga dangerous game. But at this point, I'm gonna add the feta. So we're gonna sprinkle big chunks of feta over all this. And to quote Ina, who keeps coming up on these shows, how bad could that be? And the answer is not bad at all. So ideally this feta is gonna melt onto everything as things continue to burst. All right, so I'm gonna put that in the oven. Cool. All right, look at this. This is pretty much ready, I think. Look at that, that looks so good. The nice thing about something like this is if you're not sure if it's done, you can leave it on the tray and it will continue to soften. So this is our Greek roasted broccoli recipe. And what's great about it, as you can see, is the broccoli really still got roasted, even though there was all that other stuff on the tray. And it's all gonna start to mix together now. This is a beautiful recipe. And in the original New York Times recipe, it says you could serve this over like orzo or pasta, but I think this is just a beautiful side dish if you're like making salmon or chicken or just you want to bring out a big ve impressive vegetable side to the table. I have crunchy uh, Malden sea salt, which will add another nice texture. So that's a good idea. And I think adding a little Aleppo to it will be nice. And as a final flourish, we're going to add some of our basil, which we forgot to add to our first one, but it's totally fine, because I think basil feels more correct on this one, actually. And we could drizzle this with olive oil, too, actually, and now that I'm looking at it, you know, I can use that glisten 
All right, so this is our Greek roasted broccoli and we're gonna try it with some of the tomato and, oh my God, that looks so hot. That's hot. Mmm, oh my God. Wow. That is delicious. That's probably my favorite. It's brilliant. These are some great recipes. Wow, you're watching a really good show right now. You should tell all your friends. In fact, you can embed this video in your blogs and your newsletters and your emails to your friends. Why don't you do that right now, please? All right, well, here they are. One, two, three roasted broccoli dishes, all using the same technique, yielding the best broccoli of your life. And this one has fish sauce, this one has Greek feta and onions, and then this one, the original, has toasted almonds, garlic, lemon, Parmesan. So I hope you're inspired. If you come from a family or your family hates broccoli, try doing it this way. I'm Adam Roberts. Thank you for watching this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe and tune in next week for another episode of the Amateur Gourmet Show. Cheers. Yeah.